Nature exhibits a seemingly endless array of patterns, from the cow's spots to the surgeon fish's stripes to the cheetah's spots and stripes. But Alan Turing, the guy who invented computers, thought that those patterns might not actually be all that different. To show what he meant, he came up with a simple set of mathematical rules that could give rise to all manner of patterns. The rules go something like this. Inside each theoretical organism, there are two substances called an activator and an inhibitor. The activator stimulates production of both substances, while the inhibitor slows production down. In other words, it's kind of like a predator-prey relationship. The more activator bunnies there are, the more new bunnies they make. But a bigger bunny population also means more food for the inhibitor foxes, which means more foxes, which leads to fewer bunnies, which leads to fewer foxes. Except that Turing's rules say that as the populations of predator and prey increase, their ranges expand. Only the foxes need more room, so their range expands faster than the bunny's range. Soon, the foxes dominate the surrounding areas, leaving the bunnies in the middle to keep multiplying. So what we end up with is a pool of activator surrounded by a moat of inhibitor. And wherever the activator is more abundant than the inhibitor, it triggers some kind of change, like the production of pigment, which in this case gives rise to a spot of color. The beauty of Turing's theory is that by adjusting the variables, like the spreading rate of the activator and inhibitor or the total area of the system, you can get all kinds of patterns. For example, if you start out with slightly more activator than inhibitor in a bunch of spots, you might end up with, well, a bunch of spots. Or if the system is just a narrow little strip, like a snake or a tail, you might end up with stripes. Or if the activator spreads a little faster, it might leak out and join up with other patches of escaping activator, creating a labyrinth pattern. What's more, Turing's rules could be used to simulate patterns that closely mimic the splotches on cows, the stripes on fish, the mosaic patterns on giraffes, and even the tentacles on hydras. But the fact that his mathematical rules worked on paper didn't prove that nature followed them. And now, several decades later, scientists are still trying to figure out whether some of the patterns and structures in nature arise from real-life activators and inhibitors. On the one hand, we found some patterns that happen in a very untouring way, like the segments in a developing fruit fly, which come predetermined by the fly's genetic blueprint. But on the other hand, we've also come across some tantalizingly Turing-like systems. In developing mice, for example, a protein called Sonic Hedgehog inhibits another activator protein with a less awesome name, producing stripy ridges on the roof of the embryo's mouth. And in its nubby limb ends, three different proteins activate and inhibit tissue growth to generate the stripe-like appendages known as digits. But regardless of how perfectly or imperfectly Turing's theory describes what we see in the real world, the coolest thing about it may be that it inspired biologists to go looking for evidence of Turing's ideas in living creatures. So observations inspired a theory that inspired observations that are bringing us a little closer to understanding how the cheetah got its spots and its stripes. This video is supported by Audible, where you can find the largest selection of audiobooks available anywhere, including The Information, an awesome book by science writer James Gleick that explores how luminaries like Alan Turing have helped us figure out what information even is, and how we can go about creating, transmitting, and storing it. To download The Information or another audiobook of your choice, and show your support for Minute Earth, go to www.audible.com slash Minute Earth. Oh, and one more thing. A while ago, we put out a survey to find out about your personal experiences with asparagus pee, and we got tons of great responses. Check out the link in the description below for the results.